more Jew Brewery, worky. Too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands Bikes and Boats Reviews. The sun is over the yard arm. And that means it's time for a beer again. And I've got a bottle of this. This is from the Mordew Brewery in Newcastle. And it is a bottle of their worky beer. Now, some of you may previously have known this as Worky Ticket. That was the original name from the Mordew Brewery. I don't know what's happened there. Um, there's rumors that they went bust and I actually saw online their equipment being auctioned off. I'll just take the bins off for a minute. Um, I don't know what what had gone on, but they, they were looking for a buyer and I don't think a buyer was forthcoming. I looked online again, I tried to get as much information as I could, and I kept coming across these local newspaper reports of the brewery going bust. The owners were trying to sell it. They were trying to concentrate on two pubs that they'd opened in the city centre, or a chain of pubs, I can't remember how many there was exactly. But the, um, the brewery stuff, they were looking for a buyer, the brewery part of it, and um, they obviously didn't get it because I saw the equipment from the brewery being auctioned off, as I said. And I thought that was the end of it. That was in 2019. And I never tasted this worky ticket. I've seen it a few times in the supermarkets. I never picked it up and I'm really pissed off because it sounds right up my street. I'll get onto that in a bit. Um, the current people who brew this are called Blue Brewing. Uh, it's got it on the uh, on the label here. I'm assuming they've taken over the name, possibly. And it was weird because when they was, you know, when it was up for sale, the um, the original brewers were saying, you know, we'll help you out with any, you know, advice or whatever as they were trying to sell it. They obviously wanted to get rid of it quite badly. And um, yeah, so I don't know how similar this is to the original recipe. I don't know whether the um, original brewers are giving them information. I hope they are and I hope it hasn't changed because by all accounts it was a really good beer and it's annoyed me that I didn't uh, I didn't buy some at the time. But as I say this is still brewed in Newcastle so it's you know it hasn't moved its location as to where it's brewing which I think is a good thing. They do a quite a big range this I don't know do I call them Mordew or do I call them the Blue Brewing Company? Um, just for for argument's sake, I'm going to call them Mordew. But just so as you know, it's the Blue Brewing, Brewing Company that own them. And uh, they do a quite a, right, a wide range of beers. And they do the traditional British beers as well. You know, the dark beers, the ruby beers. In fact, the, pa the parcel I got these in, they do um, traditional British dark beers. And I bought three of them, all different. The worky one, I really wanted to try. So... That is all you're going to get out of me about the brewery. Let's investigate the beer. Mr. Magoo will put the bins on and see what is going on. Right, as I say, this is just called Worky now. They used to be called Worky Ticket. Worky Ticket is um, it's Geordie slang. Geordies, of course, being people who come from Newcastle. Um, they're the slang meant um, somebody who was basically taking the piss. Um, someone, it comes from the phrase, he's working his ticket. So if you're working your ticket, you're basically slacking. You know, someone at work who, who doesn't pull their weight is working their ticket. So a piss taker, you'd get called down here. Um, it's a champion beer of Britain, according to this. Um, it says Moorsview Brewery all over it, and then underneath here on the label, it's got the Blue Brewing Company, which is mighty confusing. I don't think this is the original label. 
Um, it is a 500ml bottle, it is 4.5%. It says on the back, a tasty complex beer with malt and hops throughout and a long satisfying bitter finish. Uh, yeah, that's sort of my um, my thing. And it's a dark beer as well. So, all the signs are pointing to this being a good one. I really hope the recipe hasn't changed because, as I said before, I was told years ago at the time, and I never tried it, I should have done, um, it was saying how good this stuff was. So, let's get it open and let's see what's going on. Right, Mr. Magoo shall take the bins off. On the nose, out of the bowl. Oh, that smells absolutely gorgeous. There's a, a load of toffee malt in there and some dark fruit. Like a, a musty type dark fruit, chocolate malt. Uh, toffee malt and some hop spice it, spicy bitterness on the nose. This smells typically British. It smells very nice. Let's get it in the glass. Now this is cold unfortunately and uh, I left it in the fridge a bit too long. I should have let this cool down. Oh, sorry, I should have let this sort of warm up a little bit to at least chilled temperature. Fucking state of this glass. Right, there it is. Um, it is a dark chestnut colour. I thought it would have been darker, but it's not. That is a dark chestnut colour. One finger white head. Fair bit of carbonation. You can hear that. I'll put that in here, Mike. On the nose. Oh, it smells absolutely gorgeous. Like toffee malt. Toffee malt, dark fruit. Typical British hops like Goldings or Fuggles of some description. Mmm, I can't wait to try this. Let's get it down the hatch. Cheers. Mmm. Oh, that's really nice. It's really nice, but I think it's too cold. Wow, the spice on that. Even at that cold temperature. I'm getting the spiciness on there straight away. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to let this warm up a little bit because it is just way too cold. That is sort of how a lager should be drunk. I'm killing the flavours doing that. So I am going to come back online in about 10 minutes. In the miracle of time, you won't see this 10 minutes, but I just want to let that warm up a little bit. Right, back again. I have to say the head retention on this is really good. I have left this here for about 10 minutes. Most beers would have gone flat, not this. This has still retained its head. Nice, tight, foamy white bubbles. Let's have another go. Oh my good God, that is lovely. That is really nice. And the first thing that stands out in this is the malt. Now I'm assuming from the flavour that they're using Maris Otter in there because it's got that lovely creamy mouth feel and flavour to it. And it's lovely. It gives it a toffee, but it also gives it a lovely... Um, sort of creamy note to it as well. 
That is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, it's so good. Um, I'm really glad I let that uh, warm up a touch. This is now chilled and I'm getting a hell of a lot more flavour. The toffee now is just dominating on that. And there's lovely spice there too. Remember the spice I was getting when it was cold? That's still there. And it's reminded me of all them really good um, full bodies. And this, the body on this is absolutely amazing. It is so full. And it's only, I know ABV doesn't have much to do with it. This is 4.5%, but the body on it is so in thick and intense. It's really nice. I have to say, I mean, you can see that on the glass. There's nice lacing, but the head retention, most beers would have lost that head completely. But this has kept it, and it's really impressive. Certainly, you know, from, from what I've had in the past, you know, especially from even some of the sort of bigger brewers like Shepherd Neen, they tend to sort of lose their head. But this, I don't know what they've used in there. Um, Carapils, maybe? That is, um, Carapils is another malt that is has really good head retention properties. Oh, this is lovely. This is so good. That reminds me of all the really good dark British beers that I've had in the past. It's amazing. Certainly reminds me of the Cropton Brewery, uh, the Yorkshire Moor stuff. That was amazing stuff. And this is up there with it. This is really good. Full bodied, malt heavy, toffee malt, some caramel on there as well, some nice earthy and spicy bitterness. I'm sure they, they're using Fuggles or Goldings or possibly even both on this because it's it's just so British. It's amazing stuff. Oh, I love this. I'm pretty sure that's that Maris Otter malt that they put in there. That lovely thick creamy sort of flavour, multi creamy flavour. Oh it's gorgeous. Absolutely love this. So what's the verdict? Well um, do I really need to tell you? It's amazing. This is one of the best British beers I've tasted. This has got Super body, lovely malty, creamy malt, toffee malt, caramel malt flavour. A little touch of dark fruit on there as well. And then that lovely British hop, earthy bitterness on the back end that I absolutely love. And to be honest, don't get me wrong, I love my IPAs. I love my New England IPAs and, you know, the American styles of beer, but... When it comes to this stuff, it it's like a, I don't know, it's just, it's like an old pair of slippers, if you know what I mean. It's just, oh, the flavour on it is, you know, where the Americans go for the hops, we Brits like to go for the malt, and they've gone for it big time here. This is up there with the Adnams Broadside, the, um, the Cropton Yorkshire Moors stuff. The Shepherd Neem 1698. It's got that, you know, that full bodied quality flavour to it. Typically British, you would not mistake that for any other beer. This is what we do best over here. And we should be proud of this. This type of beer. You know, this is what we do. You know, we can lay claim to the IPAs, the pale ales, etc. But this is what we do and sadly these new craft brewers just they just don't want to know all they want to do is you know brew hoppy IPAs I think it's perceived as an old man's drink 
I don't care. I don't care what it's perceived as. I don't care who thinks what about it. I know this is good beer and I defy anyone to say they don't like it. If they do, then for me, and it's going to come across as a bit, you know, a bit snobby and all that, but I don't think they really know beer if they don't think this is a good one. I know everyone's got different tastes and all that, but you, you just cannot deny the quality in this. It is superb. This for me is 10 out of 10. If it was mathematically possible to give this 11 out of 10, I would. And it's up there with one of my favorites. Certainly in that sort of dark British beer or ale category. Up there with the Adnan Broadside, the Cropton Yorkshire Moor, and uh, the Shepherd Neem 1698, the Fuller's 1845 as well. It's just that super big British quality. It's what we do best. 10 out of 10 recommended. And remember, just like this, beer is working class champagne.